everyone. My name is Rossi McKee, and I would like to welcome you to uh, our webinar today, organized and hosted by Eastern European Gaming Summit. Uh, we have our distinct uh, and honored panelists uh, again here, representing several countries. Uh, I don't know how many participants uh, we have currently, but if you would like, uh, we will allow uh, two or three more minutes until everybody gathers and joins our webinar. Uh, so uh, maybe we should wait uh, a few minutes uh, to allow all interested parties to join our webinar. In the meantime, I would like to share uh, with uh, 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 the participants that already joined that uh, our webinar is uh, a sequence uh, and a second edition of uh, 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 a webinar that we um, uh, had uh, two months ago and that uh, brought uh, an overview of the development uh, of the gaming markets uh, in uh, the Balkan region. Um, particularly Romania, Bulgaria, Serbia, uh, Northern Macedonia, uh, uh, Bosnia, uh, Croatia. Uh, so uh, I think that um, the development in the Eastern European gaming landscape and particularly in the Balkans had been really uh, quite fascinating, especially in the last few months with a lot of changes in the regulation, with a lot of changes uh, that uh, to some degree shook the gaming industry and uh, the operators. So. We think that it has been interesting to follow these developments and to learn uh, how uh, things are happening in the region. Uh, so um, our panelists uh, were uh, really very, very kind to accept this uh, invitation and to bring uh, some additional light and more information into uh, the recent developments. So um, I think that maybe uh, it's time for us uh, to start. And here with us is uh, again, Angel Iribotov, uh, chairman of the Association of the Gaming Industry in Bulgaria. Dan Iliovici, vice president of FromBat. Uh, Ovidio Yosif, executive director uh, of Responsible Gaming Association, JOC. Vasco Ilievski. President of the Macedonian Sports Betting Association, and also Zoran Kuhic, uh, who is the Secretary General, European Organization for Gaming Club. So uh, please, uh, uh, maybe each one of you could uh, uh, use uh, uh, to introduce uh, uh, himself with two or three sentences, uh, so you can uh, best uh, outline uh, your main expertise and what uh, uh, is your current position uh, in the particular region. Angel, please go ahead. Well, for those who don't know me, actually, I've been in, in the gaming industry for more than 18 years, uh, heading many gaming operational companies, uh, dealing with finance, regulatory, compliance, and other issues. I've been also uh, chairman of the Bulgarian Association of the Gaming Industry in Bulgaria. Uh, we as a association are doing a lot of uh, research, uh, eventually lobbying uh, for the interests of uh, the sector, the society, the regulator, and all stakeholders in uh, the sector. Of course, uh, as Rossi mentioned, there are fascinating, uh, which I don't find that fascinating over the last period, because it was a kind of a thunderstorm, but yeah, we will discuss it later on. <laughs> Well, uh, Dan, uh, please uh, go ahead uh, to introduce yourself. Uh, good afternoon. Um, thank you for inviting me to participate again at this uh, uh, webinar. Um, I am in the gambling industry since uh, 2011, and uh, there are already 13 years. Um, and I've been... Um, uh, at uh, Rombet, I am uh, currently uh, vice president. And Rombet, I 
think, and uh, it's one of the most representative uh, gambling association uh, in in Romania. And I'm also vice president at uh, the association where uh, my colleague uh, Ovidio Iosif is uh, executive manager, which is called the uh, Responsible Gambling Association. And we are doing a lot of uh, interesting and uh, helpful uh, projects for uh, problem gamblers to prevent, to educate, and to treat problem gamblers. I used to be also for a little bit more than one year uh, the president of the National Gambling Office, which is the Romanian uh, regulator. Um, Ovidio, maybe you yeah. can uh, take over as uh, you're both working in the Romanian market. Yeah, thank you, Rosie. Hello, everybody. Ovidio Yosif, I'm executive director for uh, Associate, uh, Responsible Gambling Association in Romania. I joined that position and also the industry uh, four years ago. Uh, it's the fifth industry I'm working in, so uh, I found familiarities, but also some uh, something that is specific to this industry. And uh, as Dan mentioned, uh, primarily our association is handling uh, programs, helping uh, people that have developed uh, addiction, but also we are emphasizing the prevention part of uh, the programs where we are trying to educate the young people or the people at the age where they can take a decision easy by guidance. Uh, but also we are having some programs able to, to train the operator employees in order for them to understand the characteristic of uh, people with uh, addiction, how to treat them, how to, to conduct them into the right uh, direction. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, uh, I think it's covering enough. During the seminar, the webinar, probably I can add uh, more about our activities and uh, the state prospects for the future. Thank you, thank you, video. Uh, Vasco, you're next. Thank you, Rossi. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. My name is Vasko Ilievski. I'm president of Macedonian Sports Betting Association. I'm working uh, more than 12 years in the industry. Uh, I'm uh, in the association from, from the beginning. Uh, I was working also uh, from the side of the operators. Uh, so, uh, as a president of the association, we are working with the stakeholders, we are working on, on uh, CSR activities and promoting the uh, responsible gaming uh, for, for the players. So, uh, in the past, uh, we have a very difficult period uh, on uh, promoting the association, establishing the association, so uh, we can be uh, represented uh, as a uh, uh, obvious uh, uh, a part of the of the decision making for for the for the industry. So we are continuing on working on the, on that uh, subject. Thank you, Vasco and Zoran. Um, please introduce yourself again uh, for uh, our participants. Thank you. I am the Secretary General of European Organization for Gaming Law. It's a Brussels-based non-profit organization which represents European gaming and betting operators, licensed and regulated with EU law. Uh, I have a little bit more than 50, 15 years of uh, experience in the industry uh, and uh, expertise in marketing, in uh, uh, corporate affairs and especially in communications with uh, more than 30 years in communications. Uh, EU GL is uh, first a retail organization association uh, covering uh, the territory of the European Union and trying to promote and to support the voice of fair and uh, competitive uh, let's say, market uh, around the European Union with the same and uh, competitive chances uh, to run the business. Uh, protecting uh, three sides 
let's say, protecting uh, rights for three sides, for regulators, for common players, and also for organizers. Well, thank you very much, Zoran. Um, and uh, um, now I would continue with uh, what I started. And <laughs> Angel, you made a very, very relevant remark uh, when I used the terms fascinating uh, changes in the uh, gaming landscape uh, in the past few months. Uh, but I used the term not uh, uh, meaning uh, exciting and uh, going in a really um, direction which is going to promote and position the industry in a better terms, uh, just uh, vice versa. Although each one of you uh, introducing uh, himself uh, uh, mentioned that either you have been uh, having, uh, uh, first of all, uh, industry representative role through your position in the current organization or being in the past or currently part of the regulator or working with the regulators. But nevertheless, we witnessed something that had surprised us and it's continuing the trend and this is changes in the gaming laws that actually have not been communicated or coordinated with uh, the industry members. And they're coming uh, as a surprise to everyone. They're coming without considering the effect on the industry, without considering uh, what is going to happen. And and without really having the input of the uh, gaming operators and members of the industry. I think that uh, the uh, most serious developments in that regard had happened in Romania and recently in Bulgaria as well. Uh, and maybe it is going to take longest to explain these changes. Um, that is why I would like to start uh, with uh, uh, actually uh, Vasco, who is the uh, 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 representing the Northern Macedonian market, where we had expectations at the beginning of the year when we hold our uh, first uh, webinar that uh, some changes are going uh, to seriously impact uh, the market. But uh, uh, we um, uh, understood that uh, these changes uh, uh, actually did not uh, uh, happen and did not uh, um, uh, changed uh, the um, gaming market at the moment. So nevertheless, Vasco, please briefly introduce the current situation and then we will pass uh, by Zoran and uh, uh, then we will go to uh, actually uh, Dan and Angel uh, that will go more in depth into the Romanian and Bulgarian gaming market. So Vasco, uh, Yeah, thank please. you, Rusi. Uh, as you mentioned uh, on the first session of this webinar uh, on the same subject, uh, we were in a very difficult situation about uh, changing the, the gaming law, uh, but uh, uh, the gaming law didn't pass in the parliament, uh, they didn't have enough votes uh, to pass the, the law, so the current situation is, uh, I can say stable, but we know that the situation about the gaming law is never stable in any country, in any market. So uh, the current situation is uh, that we are working on a strategy uh, to improve the position of our association among the stakeholders so to, to, to put the, uh, the organization in the position that uh, we need to be asked when the new law sometimes and we know that oh, it just to make sure that we understand correctly the first changes that were uh, introduced uh, to the parliament and they were going to create uh, a situation where a lot of land-based operators were yes. about to close. Yes. These, these changes uh, also were not coordinated with the industry. No. Came and to you. Uh, this, uh, this was not coordinated with the industry uh, by our, by our uh, uh, statistic and uh, information that uh, that we have. Uh, if the law passed, we, we will have around 19% of the land-based uh, uh, operators or betting shops uh, uh, will be closed. So uh, that that was the situation about the, the law. Uh, as you know, uh, 
we have the 500 meters uh, from the primary and secondary schools uh, as a main issue, uh, but uh, that was only the, the surface of the law because uh, we have uh, some uh, different aspects of the, of the law, increasing the taxes, who, who will be tragic for the for the industry, not only the... the, so, the, the... Uh, maybe you can brief us on the development, what happened, I guess, the law passed. Uh, the uh, the law, yes, the law passed the uh, first time in the in the parliament, uh, but the president of the of the country didn't sign the the, the document, uh, and then uh, uh, by the uh, by the law it needs to go back to the parliament on the second voting. So, but uh, when when uh, uh, when they are voting second time, they need absolute. Uh, uh, my uh, voting uh, from from the not only the the smallest part of uh, uh, representatives in the parliament, but the majority of them need to need to vote for, for the law when the president didn't sign the the the, the law. Uh, so uh, they didn't uh, have enough uh, uh, votes uh, in the, the parliament. So after their uh, votes, they needed 61 votes and they have only 55. So the law didn't pass. And uh, uh, after that, uh, uh, by the law, you, you have a period of six months where nobody can uh, put another law on the same subject uh, uh, to, to to put the same law uh, in this case for the gaming industry. Uh, so uh, mm. in so the now meantime, you are within this. yes, we are now in the this period of six months. But uh, something big uh, has has happened in our country because we have elections and uh, we are waiting the new government. Uh, the new government uh, will be formed in uh, Saturday. I read it today uh, in the in the media. So uh, the new government will be from the opposite uh, party who was uh, uh, from now. So we are hoping that uh, we will have a much better uh, position to, to start uh, from now, uh, making, uh, uh, making some connections with the, with the new government. So uh, if the process for uh, passing the new law, we will be informed and we will be consulted for making the, the changes uh, that we presume will happen uh, in, uh, in some uh, future. So that, that's, that's sure that will be some changes, but uh, we are hoping that we will be the part of the making the, the new law or giving some suggestions what is good for the industry and, of course, good for the players, good for the... Uh, whole uh, society, not only for the right. for the for the organizers. So yes, that's the yes. current situation. So uh, we are hoping for the best. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Vasco. Uh, let's move to Zoran. Zoran, you're representing few markets. So maybe you can start with Serbia and then and then uh, give us a little bit more information about uh, uh, the other markets that uh, you will be talking about. Uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Croatia as well. Yeah, thank you, Rosie. Uh, Vasco gave me uh, nice uh, words to, to, to start uh, with uh, kind of comparison and also in the same time to answer uh, one of questions uh, in a written way uh, I read just a few seconds ago. Uh, well, uh, it is obvious that uh, the let's say the wave of changes uh, approach to the advertising uh, is coming uh, to the Western Balkan, and uh, uh, almost all countries in uh, Western Balkans uh, they they have a kind of uh, rumors or they already changed their regulations uh, uh, towards advertising in the industry. Uh, as uh, I said previously, uh, the last webinar, uh, there are some rumors uh, in uh, Belgrade uh, that uh, kind of changes of advertising will happen until the end of this year. And during uh, the Belgrade Expo, I had some meetings with uh, some people there and they confirmed me strongly that it will happen for sure. Also, uh, during those days, uh, it will happen uh, for sure also in Croatia and probably in Bosnia and Herzegovina. 
uh, there is a kind of end. Uh, what can uh, be said about the big, biggest uh, challenge uh, facing gaming industry in the Balkan? Uh, that was the question in question and answers. And I think that uh, all those countries uh, on the Western Balkan and Balkan generally speaking, uh, they have a kind of habit to, to, uh, to copy some regulations. And uh, the biggest challenge, according to my opinion, is to avoid uh, copying uh, bad regulations, you know, <laughs> trying to, to push them to, to use the best practices, uh, because uh, all countries have uh, some good uh, solutions uh, implemented already, and uh, it could use such a kind of experience. But unfortunately, uh, some bad experience uh, appeared As well, usually, yes. <laughs> and uh, it could be happen in the future. Unfortunately, I hope uh, we will avoid. And uh, that's the answer. What is the big, biggest uh, challenge, and also what could be happen in the future on the Balkan? Uh, for example, uh, Vasco told us about uh, this initiative in northern Macedonia about the distance of 500 meters, which could destroy the industry. Uh, the pretty same uh, initiative or kind of rumors appeared in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina during the, those days, uh, especially in the separate entity Republic of Srpska uh, with uh, let's say, a uh, kind of initiative to, to uh, define the distance of 500 meters uh, from elementary school and high school. I hope uh, that uh, the future of this initiative will be the same as in Northern Macedonia, because uh, the whole situation in uh, Republic of Srpska, Bosnia and Herzegovina, is pretty similar uh, as uh, it is in northern Macedonia. There are plenty of uh, small towns, uh, small villages, uh, when uh, in the very center of those towns are elementary school and high schools. And if you put uh, the circle of 500 meters, it means that uh, the whole city will be covered with uh, this kind of initiative to forbid uh, opening any branches of uh, gaming of chance. And uh, it will lead for sure uh, to closing whole industry with uh, losing a lot of employees, uh, losing a lot of money for government, and, and et cetera, et cetera. And of course, uh, appearing uh, some bad solutions uh, when you close uh, the regular market uh, some black market will appear for sure and uh, some bad uh, things happen uh, to the society uh, some criminal activities uh, let's say having no protection for minors etc etc so um, if we hear you correctly, you're expecting uh, changes to happen in Serbia, Croatia, and Bosnia and Herzegovina in respect of gaming uh, advertising. Yes. And uh, these uh, changes uh, also have not been communicated and coordinated with industry representatives and uh, uh, association bodies uh, representing the industry. And uh, some of the changes might might not be applicable due to the specifics of uh, each country uh, to their uh, current uh, current uh, demographics and current uh, infrastructure. Uh, so um, I understand that uh, this also is something that will re require a more active uh, input and more active role from your side in order to make sure that when changes are implemented, they don't affect uh, so radically and negatively the industry, correct? Yes, uh, but uh, there are some strong signals uh, in Serbia and Croatia that uh, uh, regulators will uh, consult uh, industry. Uh, mm -hmm. the, it is not for sure now, but there are strong signals, and I believe it will happen, as uh, it happened in a few years ago uh, with all changes. Uh, uh, situation with distance uh, in uh, Bosnia, uh, 
it's a kind of uh, I think that uh, it will not pass uh, the National Assembly, but we shall see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, uh, Zoran. I believe that the previous time you had discussed uh, some other changes that were related not only to advertising, but uh, to changes using the uh, payment uh, system and payment solution and some other uh, changes. But uh, later on, you can elaborate on this. Uh, and uh, advise how this turned uh, to be implemented uh, on the market and if everything is right now resolved and in progress. Uh, by this, uh, I will pass uh, the words to Dan. Dan, uh, please uh, brief us on the recent developments in the Romanian gaming market and also the gaming flow. Uh, especially the one that uh, involves uh, uh, villages and towns uh, with less than 15,000 inhabitants and uh, some of the warranties. And actually, uh, those are changes which, uh, uh, my understanding is that uh, they are affecting badly the operators and the industry. Uh, so this is something that is, uh, which, uh, requires the most attention of everybody in the industry uh, in order to see uh, how how um, everybody is going to move on and move ahead and uh, eventually is there any way around or any way to uh, improve the situation on the Romanian gaming market? Yes, uh, thank you, Rossi, uh, for the introduction. You pointed uh, very well uh, the main uh, issues uh, for the Romanian market which are the recent changes in the law. Uh, unfortunately, it was a sort of uh, bidding between parties, which will propose uh, more drastic uh, changes and more, most uh, drastic limitations to the gambling industry. So uh, we had uh, recently uh, local elections and uh, EU parliamentary elections. So uh, they were pushing these changes to be adopted uh, on a maximum speed before uh, this uh, uh, election uh, Sunday. And, uh, but I think that uh, uh, regarding what uh, Zoran said and uh, uh, Vasco, uh, there are some consultations between the politicians and the industry, uh, especially when uh, our association and other associations uh, are uh, asking politicians, the ones uh, who propose these changes, to uh, sit down and discuss the possible impact and what is the outcome? Why, why do they want to uh, propose such changes? Uh, they all all claim that uh, it's uh, against uh, problem gambling, that they will somehow magically uh, solve this issue if they, for example, ban uh, gambling halls uh, from uh, small cities and small uh, villages with less than 15,000 people. And when we asked how did they get to this number, to 15,000, they said uh, it was a very uh, interesting answer the politician which uh, proposed this uh, change said, uh, ah, you would have uh, asked me the same question if I would have proposed 10,000. So, uh, in fact, they had no, absolutely no uh, study or some uh, uh, information regarding what will happen if they ban uh, slot machines from uh, small cities which with less than... Uh, 15,000, 10,000, 5,000, it doesn't matter. Uh, and I think this is the same in, uh, somehow the same in, in Bulgaria. And uh, uh, what happened, it's uh, that uh, um, the National Gambling Office issued a statement that uh, slot machines, which are authorized uh, previously, before the law was adopted, may uh, uh, retain this authorization and may be uh, used, exploited, uh, by the time they are uh, authorized. But the political parties and the, everybody said, no, this is not possible. And the second day, 
the National Gambling Office issued another statement that uh, all the slot machines should be removed immediately uh, without any standing uh, uh, time, without any transition period, nothing. And imagine that uh, we had operators with uh, uh, contracts, with the rentals, with the uh, employees, and all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, against any kind of uh, legal or constitutional uh, uh, basement, um, have to be closed. And uh, the impact on the Romanian gambling uh, market, on the slot machines especially, was uh, about one third of the operators uh, uh, and slot machines uh, has to be uh, uh, closed down in small cities and uh, not only uh, vertically, so the operators, but also horizontally, because uh, many of these uh, slot holes, small uh, gaming uh, facilities were linked to the betting shops. Uh, slot machines were placed in a betting shop, in uh, small bars, and uh, all of the sudden, uh, everything uh, was closed, was ruined, and uh, uh, it's uh, it's a very. I think it's one of the most serious impacts since uh, we have uh, the gambling market regulated in Romania. Dan, Dan, forgive me for interrupting you, but by listening to you, uh, it sounds like more of a politician uh, populist act uh, than anything uh, else related to protection of players or regulating in a better way uh, the gambling industry or uh, doing some uh, new changes that are going to protect the society. All these certain activities and uh, uh, actions that have been taking, uh, taken uh, in the term of 24 hours uh, seem without really any, any uh, particular um, rational reason besides the gaining electoral vote. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. The, rational, the rationality is the day of elections. So this is the single uh, main issue, the populist uh, uh, um, measure in order to gain public attention and to get votes. On the other hand, if you, if you are talking privately with politicians from any party, uh, they admit that uh, we are uh, somehow right because you cannot uh, overthrow an entire industry overnight uh, just to gain some votes. But nobody, but they, uh, you know what they say, we cannot take your part in the parliament because uh, the opposition party will say that we have some uh, interests with the gambling industry. So uh, nobody is publicly from, I mean, the politicians will uh, claim that uh, these measures are actually uh, not uh, meant to uh, protect players or to um, um, prevent, but they are only populistic. And uh, uh, I think that it's it's uh, it's not only in Romania; it's uh, uh, worldwide. Where uh, gambling industry it's always uh, on the same uh, uh, bed uh, corridor, like prostitution and drugs. And uh, but people... you know, Dan, this is just unbelievable because gaming industry, as everybody knows, is even more strict regulated than the bank industry, than the financial institutions, everything is under control. Gaming industry is providing uh, so much uh, tax into the budget, providing so many jobs for people, building into infrastructure. It is really uh, um, very, very, very sad to see the attitude of the politicians and how they are using the gaming industry and punishing the gaming industry in order to create populist vote for them. Yeah. Uh, nevertheless, I think that uh, unfortunately we see even similar activities happening in Bulgaria just with uh, the very, very recent development again just prior to uh, new elections in Bulgaria. Angel, maybe you can brief us a little bit about the situation in Bulgaria and what has happened. Well, again, good afternoon. What happened actually? Uh, well, 
it was a situation where this uh, kind of, uh, let's say, uh, joint work and uh, eventually uh, communication between us as associations and uh, politicians uh, turned into, how do I say, perfect storm, storm for all the operators within, let's say, less than a week time. Uh, Technically, from my point of view and from our point of view, that was a kind of uh, disastrous changes in the law. And unfortunately, it was voted unanimously, meaning no vote against. I mean, all political parties, although they have their own arguments against each other, actually voted in favor of uh, the changes in the law. What happened technically is that, yeah, one good thing, they prohibited, uh, for example, any transactions uh, from banking uh, and from uh, <coughs> uh, uh, point of view between unlicensed online operators and unlicensed operators and then uh, uh, physical persons, which is a good for the industry. And then, uh, yeah, I, I can uh, say that it is it is really good for the industry because uh, they limit uh, the availability, the access to this type of uh, gaming service to unlicensed operators. But on the other side, for the licensed operators, uh, the major actually uh, drawback was that they prohibited advertising as a whole. Uh, they prohibited advertising in uh, uh, med any kind of media. It is uh, in any kind of, uh, let's say, on any state uh, uh, property, apart from uh, billboards. Uh, and, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, they do not allow any numbers, any, any, any kind of... Uh, 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 actually a uh, promotion to be uh, advertised. So you can only advertise uh, the name, uh, the trademark of uh, the organizer. Uh, of course, uh, for non-complying, actually they have uh, serious fines. On the other side, on the other side, they've, they increased actually uh, uh, the mm -hmm. contributions uh, to the um, for the responsible gaming that the operators are paying uh, and uh, so far nobody takes care actually about how this uh, money is being spent uh, actually they go into the state budget and then technically we don't have we don't have any kind of uh, good uh, feedback uh, how this money is spent whether this money is uh, for the benefit of uh, the operators uh, the good thing the other good thing is that uh, people who self restricted from gambling actually were allowed to be uh, uh, actually uh, written off from this register within 30 days from uh, being uh, themselves registered in this registry. So far it was 24 years and this affected the sector. I mean, you know, people with uh, kind of impulsive behavior actually decided just overnight to, to uh, be self-registered and then they cannot uh, be uh, deregistered from this registry. Now they can, according to uh, the changes uh, in the law. Uh, well, on the other side, on the other side, they decided to limit actually the gambling uh, 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 offerings in any city uh, with less than 10,000 uh, population, apart from, uh, let's say, places in the national resorts, according to the uh, law on tourism. And of course, uh, 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 they did it uh, overnight. They gave actually the operators uh, maybe 36 periods to comply. I mean, if they're not in compliance to comply with uh, the new law, they change actually the definition of the distance. So far it was uh, distance from schools. Now they decided to have distance from actually um, universities, distance from children playgrounds uh, where there is no exact definition about what is children play, uh, ch children playground. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I think even the regulator, the regulator is a bit confused how and what practice should they uh, apply uh, in order to uh, actually control the execution of uh, the law. That's, that's uh, well, I can't see um, a little bit of a nightmare for everyone because we don't have uh, direct, concrete instructions on how do we uh, operate uh, 
to be compliant. On the other side, they prohibit also mm -hmm. on the facade of uh, building actually, um, unless uh, uh, or this building in this building there is a gaming hall. But uh, of course, uh, it should be not more than twenty percent of. Uh, the size of the facade of 50 square meters. Of course, they allow actually sponsoring uh, football clubs and sports clubs and then eventually uh, other kind of events but uh, and cultural events. Uh, but of course, uh, let's say so far, we do not have uh, any, any, any clear pictures uh, what uh, will happen uh, in the future. Of course, Dan, what... I see that you want to add something or say something. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's 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 very interesting. Uh, we we have in the parliament also an initiative regarding the minimum distance uh, where the gambling facilities must be uh, allowed, are allowed. Uh, but nevertheless, it's very funny that uh, the, in Romania also they introduced the uh, obligation uh, for the National Gambling Office to uh, have a, a national registry of uh, all gambling facilities of slot machines and self-exclusion and so on. But they are not capable. And uh, uh, the more it's uh, I was uh, I was a little bit uh, uh, not surprised, but uh, what Angel said that. Uh, they increased also the responsible gambling tax in Romania. Uh, although, and maybe uh, Ovidiu can um, um, develop a little bit more on this subject. Uh, in uh, six years, seven years, they had some million euros collected at the National Gambling Office. And they spent nothing on uh, responsible gambling projects. Although Ovidiu, uh, I think that uh, he had dozens of meetings with uh, uh, the regulator, with the uh, uh, responsible gambling bureau within the regulator, and uh, nothing is changing. And uh, all of a the sudden, they also increased the tax in Romania, and uh, uh, they introduced the possibility for the government to take to the state budget 70% of this uh, money, I think in Bulgaria it's even worse. They take everything, yes, uh, Angel? Yeah, yeah, they yeah. take everything. And inclusive, yeah, just one thing I actually missed. Uh, every uh, person who is on a social aid paid by the state actually will be uh, compulsively uh, listed in the uh, actually self-restricted person. So it will be automatically restricted by the state. So if you get so, student, Angel... you're not allowed. Angel, uh, my understanding in terms of the gaming tax uh, collected in Bulgaria is that all goes to the budget yeah, and spend... then uh, the taxes for responsible gaming, they also are uh, actually allocated to a particular fund uh, that goes to the sports ministry, but exactly. not to the health ministry. And uh, when you ask especially before the last changes in the law had passed, uh, uh, there was not clear, clear uh, communication how the funds uh, for responsible gaming uh, collected by the operators were allocated. Yeah. Was that correct? Yeah, that, that was correct so far. Now, from now on, actually, the Ministry of Health will also be, be involved and uh, they will actually be involved in, in spending this money for prevention for but they need to prepare the draft ordinance actually from with the new law the minister of health and the minister of finance actually should accept uh, approve uh, by law which uh, actually determines how the money collected on responsible gaming will be spent so, so far, also maybe uh, you um, i don't uh, know if you mentioned that in bulgaria uh, there was another change uh, 6 months ago uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. That you discussed uh, uh, during our previous webinar that was actually uh, again changed overnight, just as a Christmas present. But, but <laughs> that was that was that was Christmas Christmas bonus for the government. Actually, they decided <laughs> to collect some extra taxes. Actually, and then they decided to collect it quite quickly until the end of February. That was single fee from which they expected around eighty million. Actually. Uh, level to uh, 40 50 million euro to collect by the end of February, and they put all the organizers actually into a situation okay, you pay by the end of February or you lose your license. 
Then when all the organizers actually paid this single fee at the end of February, they implemented the new law. So now you pay it actually single fee until the end of your license, which is, let's say, uh, 130, 1, uh, uh euro per month, uh, uh, per month uh, for the remaining term of the license for Sofia uh, actually our case and for the our case in the provinces this half. But at the end of the day, now they, they've changed actually uh, uh, the other restriction. They say now, okay, you pay taxes in small cities. Now you get off uh, from the small cities within three years period. Although if you have license for- Well, uh, years, from what I hear, uh, from what I hear actually in Bulgaria, you also have had uh, uh, many, especially smaller operators that uh, were forced to, to um, get out and to close the uh, doors. And uh, eventually with the current uh, changes uh, that are requiring uh, those locations to close uh, within three years if they're placed in villages with less than 10,000 citizens, uh, uh, this is going uh, to even further change the uh, landscape of the land-based operators in Bulgaria. Yeah, exactly. So um, probably a lot of the changes uh, in Bulgaria and in Romania uh, are similar. And uh, uh, again, maybe there were driven by several factors uh, hopefully we want to believe that it was the purpose to protect the society and to bring the interest of the uh, the social interest and the interest of the society on the first place but uh, the pure coincidence that uh, this is happening just prior to elections, uh, political elections that is happening uh, overnight without any signs for intended changes, without any consideration or discussion with the industry is, uh, um, I would say, uh, not uh, not uh, um, putting our mind in ease that it was done as a fair play and driven only and purely uh, by the uh, interest uh, of the society. So uh, my following question uh, to all of you is, um, do you think uh, and see similar trends in the region and in general in the gaming industry that first of all, the industry is used as the bad um, the bad and evil uh, part uh, and uh, sector that uh, is not contributing with anything, although we just mentioned that uh, uh, we pay taxes, we uh, comply completely with all strict regulations, we are transparent, we uh, provide a lot of jobs uh, and job opportunities, we build infrastructure, we invest into a lot of uh, um, uh, social activities uh, related to uh, outside and not business related uh, projects. Uh, but in the same time, we are always pointed as uh, the bad sector and the bad industry. And what the industry and the associations uh, uh, could do about that, how we can work with the politicians and with the government to uh, bring better understanding about the sector, how we can improve our positioning, how we can improve our image and really uh, stand proud Loudly with what we're doing for for uh, um, uh, the society and how we uh, contribute uh, with the economic impact and uh, uh, with the services we provide. Uh, what is your opinion? Okay, may I? <laughs> yes. 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 Please uh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you. Uh, as you mentioned. Uh, uh, Always the, the, the gaming industry is uh, presented like we are the, the most evil thing in the society. Uh, besides uh, the gaming law in every country, as I know, is uh, strictly regulated. 
at, and uh, there is nothing uh, illegal in general uh, because uh, when you have a regulated market, uh, the black market uh, doesn't have uh, much space to develop. So uh, I believe that uh, the politicians always uh, use the gaming industry for short term uh, benefits for them. Uh, especially in the moment when we have, when we have uh, uh, elections or some voting or maybe improving their political position. So uh, in a uh, sense of uh, providing better position for our association and generally for the industry, I believe that the uh, uh, main thing that uh, we need uh, to do is uh, working on uh, projects like uh, CSR activities, working with society, helping the, the people who need the help the most, uh, especially in this in, in the areas where the uh, the government and the the state doesn't uh, have uh, enough done. Uh, uh, in this sense, I'm meaning for for the people who need uh, uh, who are on the on the edge of the society. I don't know uh, the poor people, the the uh, people who need some uh, medical attention or something uh, that uh, the the government and the state uh, uh, doesn't have uh, enough programs and uh, not doing much for those uh, people. Uh, working uh, secondly, working on responsible gaming and uh, improving the reputation of, of the of the industry, that the industry takes care uh, for for their customers, for the players, because nobody, no business uh, has uh, uh, intention of ruining uh, their customers, because you need healthy customers to have a business who can develop and and uh, work for many many years. Uh, there is not such an industry in the world that uh, needs uh, uh, customers who are uh, not using the uh, the service that you provide on the, in the right way. So my opinion is uh, working on responsible gaming, teaching the players how they can uh, properly use the our uh, services and working with them uh, to uh, understand what we are offering to them that that is uh, something for uh, pleasure, for free time, for uh, enjoying their uh, free time and etc. So I think that uh, these are the some uh, directions where uh, the industry and association uh, need to work on to improve their uh, uh, to, to improve their uh, public uh, uh, opinion uh, for for what we are doing in society uh, besides uh, the official numbers of how many people we are uh, employing uh, how uh, many taxes we are paying in the national budget and and uh, and etc so i i believe that this is uh, this is the main thing that uh, we need to do especially because by my opinion the gaming industry in our countries uh, general in western balkans are relatively uh, 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 new thing, uh, I can say, because uh, I don't know, uh, in this organized form uh, as, a, as a gaming industry, we are working uh, in the past 20 or 30 years. So it's a little bit short period for uh, people to understand uh, how the gaming industry in general works and what is the main purpose of the, of the gaming industry. Thank you very much, Vasco. Uh, by mentioning responsible gaming, I would like to pass the word to video because uh, he hasn't taken any participation yet, but his main focus is responsible gaming uh, in Romania. So, Ovidio, uh, what is uh, your take on this uh, on this question? Yeah, thank you for, for this um, uh, opportunity to, to talk about uh, what I believe we can do. Uh, taking into account the experience I have with the politicians uh, in the recent uh, period, because I was invited in a few parliamentary commission when they debated different law, and uh, I was uh, amazed about uh, uh, their mentality, at least the mentality of the most vocal politicians that uh, wanted to score points uh, by uh, punishing the industry. Uh, when I uh, tried to, to move into an approach that let's try to make first a study of a different uh, restriction, because the restriction can uh, 
you can hurt more the people at risk or people with uh, gambling addiction uh, because they will go to direct uh, you know, black market or uh, you don't know what kind of uh, mafia can uh, organize some kind of uh, games below the, the market. And if you don't make a study and just impose a restriction, you can uh, make the situation worse. The position of this politician was, don't teach us how to make law. We know how to make law. We sense, we know the society, we know everything. We don't need studies for that. And uh, I just want now to, to meet that politician because uh, that was the voice of one of the opposition party that was uh, putting the um, uh, gambling industry agenda on the top of the priority of the party, which I believe it's a minor subject for a country like Romania. They have choose the wrong uh, subject to be placed as number one. The result in the election was uh, that they won half of the points compared with four years ago. So practically the same disregard for studies in our uh, field, it was done for them by studying their electorate. Uh, and then I discussed with a sociologist and he said that, you know, for the general public, uh, more than three, five percentage of the population, they are not sensitive to the gambling problem. They understand they could be problems, but they are not top priority. So practically a party that is betting to get a lot of votes by just putting a lot of restrictions, uh, it's addressing to a very limited market segment. They believe that the, the full market will follow and the votes will, uh, will come into their pockets. It didn't happen. So those guys won half of the votes of four years back uh, by betting on a bad subject. It's a subject, of course, we cannot hide it. But this is not a major subject for a country like Romania. There are at least 10 subjects and being in opposition, you can attack from different angles the, the power. But they selected this one because they don't trust the studies. They don't believe that study would be also good for them as a party. They don't believe the study can be good for us uh, as an industry. And the result was a disaster. So if we as an industry, uh, recently we had elections everywhere and uh, probably that was the temptation of the politicians uh, to, to score high in the election. We can make a post-election study. What was the influence in your voting decision uh, the gambling restriction that were pushed by politicians. And if we understand that this is less than 10% as relevant for the general public, maybe the politician will understand that this is not, uh, you know, a subject to put it on the air every time you have elections, because it's not so drastically relevant for the society. And also you can see this duplication of the position one part of the politicians, maybe those from the parliament, from the legislative, they want to make a lot of restriction, to, to be visible with this type of uh, initiative. But the executive part of the government, uh, hungry for money, doesn't know how to increase more taxations and to, to have uh, more revenue from, from the industry, uh, which practically brings us to, to the old joke that uh, the biggest uh, addicted uh, entity in this world is the government and <laughs> probably the next program i have to, to develop in our association is to to help the government which is the most addicted person for the gambling to 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 act in a more natural way okay. um so i haven't seen a, an approach from this angle to understand uh, what uh, is the change in uh, voting uh, decision of the people uh, a push against uh, the gambling industry? It's less than 5%, it's 10%. If it's above 20%, then yes, it's an issue and we have to be a little more careful. But this case where the party that initiated the restriction on the gambling industry, of course, the idea was confiscated by the main party after that, but this opposition party, which had fantastic opportunity to grow twice in uh, scores, to get only half, because they forgot all the other major themes. 
protect the, the government. So uh, we as an industry, we can discuss with some sociologists and to make some studies and to understand what actually it's, because we are living in a bubble. I told you, this is my fifth industry that I'm working. And uh, I also notice uh, whenever it's a bad news, and in this industry, all the time, there is the bad news in the paper. Automatically, everybody is uh, trembling. Everybody is uh, distrust. Uh, we want to act, to, to make a statement, to, to bring up psychologists that it's uh, trying to dismantle the, the... Okay, but those are normal. It's part of life. But being in a bubble, you believe that the world is ending. And I believe that the same way some politicians that are pushing only these limitations are living in their bubble. The society doesn't care too much uh, of their bubble, or not more than 5%. And this, I believe, can be studied by the industry. And to discuss very gentle with some very vocal politicians, that, guys, makes no sense. Choose another subject if you want to, to win elections. Well, uh, um, if uh, I hear you correctly, you're uh, promoting more active role of the industry and industry organizations in working with the politicians to uh, bring into their uh, understanding uh, uh, the position and the view on different uh, aspects of the gaming industry and also the uh, society and uh, um, pretty much uh, aspects related to responsible gaming, aspects related to uh, addicted, uh, addicted players, etc. So, uh, do you think uh, that it is something that could be promoted and pushed forward uh, to create a sort of a committee that will involve members of the uh, associations of countries on the Balkan uh, region and create informal organization that can start working together with uh, probably European Organization for Gaming Law. Uh, Zoran, maybe you can take your opinion and um, uh, comment on this and uh, uh, pretty much have representative and lobbying and uh, let's say um, uh, informational role uh, working with the regulators in different countries, first of all, to bring to their attention the aspects of the gaming industry that they might not be aware of. In addition to that, to help them understand different practices in different countries, uh, uh, some of which might have a good and uh, positive impact, uh, uh, promoting, uh, obviously, the interests that they pursue uh, in respect of protection of the society, and in the same time, help them understand which is not good and why it could not be applicable into a different geographic area. So what do you think about this, uh, Zoran? And maybe, Angel, you can also comment on I this can also opportunity. Add a few. Sure. Mm -hmm. But no, let's sort of start, and after that, I will continue or after Angel. Well, uh, I will try to 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 answer also on uh, some uh, questions uh, in the same way. Uh, firstly, I, I have to say that uh, whole industry is full of stereotypes, and uh, you can fight against it. Let's say fight uh, only in one way communicate, communicate, and finally communicate. It's, it's a very boring and a very, very tough job to do, to communicate against such a strong stereotypes. Uh, but it is very important and it is necessary. The most difficult thing is uh, to persuade managers and uh, owners, of course, of organizers of uh, gaming companies uh, that they have to communicate in the best way during let's say good times uh, to spend some money for such a kind of things but you have to build relations with all kind of stakeholders continuously 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 to communicate uh, with uh, the widest uh, public uh, uh, in uh, all countries uh, with uh, some experts, not only uh, experts uh, in the industry, but widely. 
with uh, some medical experts, with uh, some financial experts, uh, also with politicians, to communicate, to communicate, and also to be honest uh, with your players, uh, to be honest in the, such a kind of relations. Uh, you have to do a lot of things in a way of responsible gaming, uh, in a way of uh, some kind of... Uh, corporate uh, responsibility, et cetera, et cetera. But I will give you a kind of anecdote uh, from Africa uh, about five or six years ago. One large company in one country in Africa uh, covered uh, with some, uh, let's say, responsible and marketing activities, whole market in that country. Uh, they were sponsors. Uh, for uh, almost uh, all clubs and uh, uh, in completely different sports, uh, they donated a lot of money. And one time, politicians decided, well, it is obvious that uh, such a company uh, has a lot of money and we have to take them one part. And they increased enormously, they increased taxes. And a whole building of their approach uh, uh, fell down because uh, they, uh, let's say, they, they didn't do it properly. They didn't communicate properly. It is not the idea to spend a lot of money. It's the idea to, to, small, uh, to spend it smart, wisely. Uh, finishing... Yes, Finishing uh, about Absolutely. that is uh, the most, according to my opinion, the most important role is uh, association, a role of associations. Uh, associations do not represent specific company. They represent the industry and they can play uh, freely uh, to be completely independent from separate interests of companies. And they are very good very good instrument, a very good tool to change uh, the mind, let's say, uh, mindset of all, let's say, community. Not only uh, some uh, professionals or, or some, not only professionals from the industry, but widely. Uh, and uh, it is a kind of very slow and long-term job. Uh, you can't expect to, to change it in five years. No. Uh, if you change uh, 1% in five years, you are extremely successful in that way. Uh, and the, the, the mind problem, mind challenge is to persuade uh, decision makers in the industry uh, to play in that way. Sometimes some managers, I, I, I can't agree with them, they, they like and they want instant results. You know, if I finance uh, some organization, I want to see uh, what is going on this year. But uh, if you play in that way, uh, this year is very good year with uh, having no changes, with having no attacks on the industry. And uh, it looks that uh, kind of association do not uh, do anything except spending money. And because of that, you have to change it. Uh, You're and, absolutely uh, right, Doran. And this uh, is something that the industry really needs to understand, that this is a constant job. It requires yeah. a constant work and commitments to, uh, first of all, um, bringing up to the attention and understanding of the regulators and the society, the role of the industry and their uh, responsible um behavior and their responsible uh, role in the society, uh, bringing up the image and in the same time working uh, constantly to keep this uh, uh, in, a, in a good position, uh, not only in situation where they have to react because of some uh, negative impact on the industry, but also in good times. So uh, you're absolutely right in that. Um, I would uh, pretty much suggest that we try to wrap up uh, quickly uh, the, the webinar because we are already past the time. 
but uh, I would like to give you the opportunity to say a few last words and also uh, not only about this question, but also to uh, comment of how do you see in the next uh, uh, 6, 12, 18, 24 months the development of the gaming industry in the landscape in the region? Well, let me start, Rossi. I mean, because, I, yeah, I just wanted to say a few words about, uh, uh, let's say, the society issue and uh, the, the politicians issue. Actually, the biggest issue for us, I mean, you know that we've been working in, in uh, uh, Bege Expo and the Eastern European Gaming Summit since 2008 on the topics of uh, all hot topics of the industry, uh, including responsible gambling and everything. But uh, the biggest issue is that actually politicians are a bit short sighted. I mean, they're seeing only until the end of their term. And especially in Bulgaria, we, we do have currently quite short term of uh, the politicians in, in, in the lawmaking authority, which is the Bulgarian parliament. They are the biggest issue. The biggest issue here is that, yeah, we are working uh, so that society recognizes us, the society recognizes the ideas. But when you have actually new politicians coming, maybe we should have a gaming training academy for politicians so that they know about the issues. Because, you know, when the people change in the parliament, actually, you need to start again explaining, explaining, explaining. Some of them are also being attacked by uh, other NGOs like, uh, uh, let's say, NGOs seeking money to, to, to work on uh, some public programs like, uh, let's say, responsible gambling treatment of... Uh, uh, actually addicted people from which they do not understand anything. But of course, this is a big uh, communication and interaction issue between many, many uh, uh, actually uh, stakeholders and every, everyone has uh, different interests. Otherwise, uh, I, I cannot say that we are not working. But on the other side, if you are quite seeing, quite recognizing the society, they say, ah, okay, they have more money. Yeah, let's tax them more. Why don't we tax them more? When when you are a bit silent, actually, and no, nothing is hint, uh, is uh, heard for you, yeah, they start saying, okay, ah, they're hiding something, they're doing something illegal, let's face them. Uh, and we all know that uh, it is really a, a big uh, industry uh, for the benefit of society that creates jobs, that creates technology, uh, that creates uh, 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 a lot of uh, uh, good things uh, uh, and wealth for the society as a whole. But uh, of course, when it comes for the populist uh, uh, decisions and solutions, actually, everybody is looking at the gambling industry and is showing with the finger. That's my conclusion. Hopefully. Very good, very good proposal, Angel. Besides uh, the committee that uh, could uh, involve representatives from the associations in the Balkan countries, uh, create academy for politicians, a <laughs> gaming academy for politicians. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely yeah. right. Uh, uh, unfortunately, the understanding about the sector and the industry is not uh, coming together with the changes of the politicians. So uh, probably a big part of this stems from the, for the problem stems from, from this. Um, who also wants to uh, take uh, and uh, say a few last words about the gaming industry in the region? How do you see the gaming I, industry in, in the next uh, um, 12, 24 months? I will try to, 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 to finalize in, in a few sentences, uh, in the same time answering one question, it's very interesting for me. Uh, uh, stable or two questions. Uh, uh, stable situation uh, and the environment is very, very important for each industry, also for gaming industry. And that's the most important thing uh, we have to take care of. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, you know, one of stereotypes in the industry is that uh, the Balkan has a uh, the worst uh, regulations around the world. It is not true. But I will give you an example. Uh, three countries in Europe uh, still have a turnover tax. One of them is Germany. Uh, about 10 years ago in uh, Bucharest, uh, there was international conference and they brought in that time, at that time, a uh, new uh, 
gaming law. And I said at that time that it's brilliant one at that time. And it's very modern. They were shocked. They, they, they always, uh, it, it's not about Romania. It's not about Bucharest. Uh, it's all uh, about the Balkan because we look uh, around abroad and uh, we think that uh, everything is better uh, far away. Uh, I gave an example. Uh, Germany has uh, worse uh, regulations than, let's say, Romania or Serbia or Bulgaria. Uh, also, for example, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, they has uh, three entities uh, with different regulations. Such a kind of regulations has uh, Austria, Germany, Spain. Uh, we have to try to, to stabilize situation about regulations, mostly, because each industry, of course, gaming industry too, uh, need stable situation on the first place. After that, all other condition, of course, it's very important. But stable situation, uh, it's my personal opinion, is the most important thing for each industry. And I will close with such a kind of thing. Um, if if I may, uh, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, oh, and uh, you are very correct, Zoran and uh, Vasco, uh, Ovidio also. Uh, we need to uh, discuss, to communicate. But in my uh, humble opinion, you cannot communicate uh, rationally with somebody who is driven by emotions. Uh, if they see on a TV show uh, that a, um, a player, a gambler, uh, suddenly lost uh, all his uh, salary, during uh, one gambling session, uh, you are so excited and uh, uh, the general public is uh, coming ahead with the proposition to completely ban gambling. And these are emotion-driven uh, uh, behaviors. Uh, and uh, the mass media, unfortunately, is also driven by this kind of news. They want, they do not want a, a plain, uh, uh, news like uh, uh, the train arrived at time in uh, uh, Bucharest. No, this is not a news. <laughs> the, uh, I just read that today it's very hot in Romania and uh, we have uh, very big delays on trains uh, leaving Bucharest and coming to Bucharest. So this is a news uh, to be uh, taken over by the mass media. And so, uh, of course, we cannot give up on discussing with politicians and mass media. We cannot give up doing right things. Uh, but we, I, I personally do not expect, especially during an election, uh, a general election year, to have some uh, results, uh, some benefits for our industry uh, when everybody is claiming that uh, we are evil, we are uh, destroying lives and uh, so on. So it, it's it's a question. John, you're in, absolutely uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a question uh, uh, in uh, the Q and A session. It's uh, uh, what market trends should stakeholders be aware of moving forward in Romania? Uh, if I would be a stakeholder in gambling industry, I I would uh, put everything on hold this year because uh, we will have general elections and presidential elections uh, in the autumn and uh, probably in the winter. And uh, I, I personally believe that uh, the issue of uh, gambling will again rise. We have some six, seven initiatives in the parliament uh, from bad to worse, each of them. And uh, I, I don't see... This year, I cannot see the light uh, at the end of the tunnel of this uh, completely wrong approach of uh, uh, emotionally driven uh, solutions. 
Yeah, Dan, you're absolutely right. And I do agree with you that uh, working on the emotional strength, uh, especially at the last moment, is uh, very easy to affect the general opinion and the public opinion. That's why I think that Doran has mentioned that this is a long-term strategy, something that will take five to 10 years, and it requires constant work and commitment from the industry members and from the uh, operators, from the association something that requires the uh, um, uh, daily steps and that requires consistent uh, uh, work and push uh, with all of the involved parties uh, that need to to understand the positioning of the gaming industry. Because yes, there are uh, addicted players. There are negative impacts on their families. We don't uh, uh, argue against that. Uh, we need to obviously to uh, clarify what is the percent, how the statistic works, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But we cannot uh, uh, say that it does not exist the same way the uh, uh, um, uh, manufacturers of liquor have uh, uh, also people that are uh, addicted to um, drinking alcohol and uh, having habitual alcoholism, uh, which actually is very prevalent. Are there people that unfortunately become alcoholics? Uh, are there people that unfortunately develop some uh, uh, lung diseases because they smoke. They do. This exists. We don't uh, argue against that. But the point is, what is the role of the industry? How the industry protect the players? What is the social role and responsibility of the industry? What is the contribution of the industry to the society? Because negative sides exist. But this is a regulated industry. It uh, brings its um, uh, positive impact and protects really the player uh, and uh, everybody involved. It brings uh, the necessary taxes into the budget. So uh, obviously we need to work on this, uh, uh, this uh, area consistently with the regulators and with the society uh, pretty much to position the pros and the cons and how do we react and how do we protect the players from the negative sides. So uh, a few last uh, words, uh, maybe two words from uh, each one of you because we're running out of time. And before we close, I would like uh, uh, again to invite every one of you Maybe, Angel, you're going to announce this later on throughout, um, sorry, during the year that uh, in November, during the next edition of Eastern European Gaming Summit, uh, which is going to take place 27, 28 of November, we will make a round table and invite everybody from uh, uh, different associations on a round table and discussion to create Eastern European Gaming Committee. So last word from every one of you before we close well actually so far i mean my last words the topic was <laughs> balkan actually development a maze or a maze a maze actually but i think it's rather a mess currently <laughs> maybe it should be on it <laughs> Just, but yeah, I hope that uh, at least uh, we will find actually uh, the right way uh, to 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 influence uh, the society that uh, this industry is uh, not that wrong as everybody is trying to uh, uh, present. I mean, this industry is uh, any industry like any other industry creating good for the society taking care about uh, the eventual harm that it uh, uh, might uh, bring. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, the industry is a responsible player on the market, pays uh, a lot of taxes. So that's, that, that's my final words. Vasco? Yeah, uh, what can I say? Uh, we need to, as Zoran said, uh, to work continuously on uh, uh, with the whole stakeholders uh, and it's a long process. It's not uh, 
something that we can do in a couple of years. It uh, maybe uh, needs decades to to finish what we started, but uh, we 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 don't need to give, to give up uh, on doing that. So I believe uh, that's the the main thing uh, as a finish point for 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 this session. Yosef. Yeah, I think it would be a good idea to have a network uh, in the Balkan countries uh, for the uh, organizations such as uh, ours that are taking care about responsible gambling. So uh, if you have uh, contacts in your country, please put them in uh, touch with me and probably we can organize a network. It's uh, good to understand what is happening uh, at our level and mm -hmm. to that share it, yeah, experience or uh, I think uh, we should hope for the better and prepare for the worse, uh, unfortunately. And uh, regarding the long-term approach, uh, basically uh, it is correct. But if I, as a, an operator, uh, each year or each month, I am looking at the parliament to see which is uh, the stu most stupid uh, initiative against uh, the gambling uh, industry. I would be very much uh, uh, pessimistic about how my business will uh, sh uh, will uh, look like in uh, five or ten years. Because uh, as I uh, mentioned at the very beginning of this uh, very interesting webinar, is uh, that uh, in Romania, uh, a third of the operators, of the land-based operators, had to uh, close the business because of the most recent changes. Uh, a third of the slot machines were taken, were uh, uh, completely closed. Uh, how, how can I, as an operator, think on uh, optimistic long-term business? Uh, instead of this, I would grab as much money as possible now uh, without any, uh, I think, plan for tomorrow because nobody knows what the politicians will uh, consider doing tomorrow. So it's in a normal society with a normal business, uh, it's correct. But with our business, it's impossible to predict what will happen tomorrow. Imagine uh, closing the the uh, one third of the operators from today, from yesterday till today, it's it's unbelievable without any uh, uh, um, explanation or any logic or any any kind of study or anything else. Yes, this is my pessimistic uh, final uh, word. Well, <laughs> thank yes, you, that, thank you very much, uh, Zoran. Maybe you're allowed to, uh, to add into the to this. A more oh, optimistic, you... an optimistic one, Zoran, please. No, no, uh, I have to <laughs> say that uh, I'm not pessimistic, but I'm optimist with experience, you know. And uh, I'm not so pessimistic, to be honest, but uh, I have to agree with a lot of things uh, Dan said. Uh, my final words is uh, are that uh, actual and future changes uh, of regulations, not only uh, Balkans, but uh, across the world, will uh, additionally speed up uh, a whole turning uh, uh, a whole industry to the online. And uh, my personal recommendation is to prepare uh, mob new mobile applications, to prepare uh, artificial intelligence, to prepare companies for a new age. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, thank you to our panelists uh, and thank you for all of the participants. Uh, I didn't uh, uh, open for the Q&A, uh, although we had quite a few questions uh, pending here, but I hope that we covered uh, uh, the answers to most of them. And I will ask our host uh, to prepare a list and to distribute to all of the panelists so they can uh, answer in writing uh, the questions and then uh, we can post the answers uh, onto the um, uh, page of the Eastern European Gaming Webinars. Uh, uh, so thank you again, everyone, and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. It was a very interesting and very productive webinar. Thank you.
Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.